I love that Hebrews presents Jesus as God's final word to us. It's like the author he was saying, okay, doesn't get any better than this. This is, this is the zenith, this is the high point. This is Jesus, the superior one. Hebrews is one of those very thorough uh, handlings of the gospel and scripture. I would, I would um, liken Hebrews to Romans for its thoroughness. Um, Romans has this uh, central contrast between the law and grace. What the law is unable to do and what grace does. And Hebrews has a central contest, contrast too. It's between the old covenant and the new covenant, the inadequacies of the, new co the old covenant and the fulfillment of the new covenant in the Lord Jesus Christ. To go after that, Hebrews essentially is organized by three questions. And they're, these questions don't come in sort of chronological order, but they dot the whole of this book. The first question is, why do people need redemption? The, the, the gospel really hinges on that question. If, if people are okay in and of themselves, then why redemption? Why a savior? Why this plan that we have traced through all of these books of the Bible. Well, Hebrews presents people that are unclean, that are prone to wander, that are in bondage of the fear of death and the devil, that are prone to unbelief, that are rebellious. In fact, if you, if you take that collection of the way that Hebrews talks about people apart from grace, it it really is a summary of those three words for sin, uh, transgression, iniquity, and sin. Transgression being rebellion, uh, iniquity being moral uncleanness, and sin pointing to inability. So it's a very powerful argument that every human being is in need of redemption. The second question is, why then is Jesus the hope of sinners? And the argument in um, Hebrews is that Jesus is far superior to the Old Testament priests and institutions uh, because Jesus is both God and man. It was a God-man needed for salvation. And because he is the God-man, he is able to overcome death and the devil and becomes then for us a sympathetic and understanding high priest. Uh, I love that Hebrews presents Jesus as God's final word to us. It's like the author he was saying, okay, doesn't get any better than this. This is, this is the zenith. This is the high point. This is Jesus, the superior one. And then there's a third question that really flows out of the first two. It is, what are the dangers to those who believe? Okay, let's say that I recognize my need for redemption. I recognize that Jesus is the only redeemer. What are the dangers? Well, it's a misunderstanding of what faith is. So he has a lot to say about the nature of faith. It's the danger of a wandering heart. And so... Hebrews has a lot to say about apostasy, and, and in Hebrews you have some of the scariest warnings you find in all of Scripture for forsaking God. Uh, there's a third danger, it's the failure to persevere, uh, to get weary, to get, get tired. And then finally, there's the danger of misunderstanding God's discipline, that God's discipline of the believer is not condemnation, our condemnation was carried by Jesus, but was correction, is correction for the purpose of righteousness. What an amazing piece of writing. It's just so 
so hard to do justice to Peter or to Hebrews in, in such a uh, short period of time. But those three questions, why do people need redemption? Why is Jesus the hope of the sinners? What are the dangers to those who believe? Are three questions that we should go back to again and again and again and instill in our hearts a deep love for the God-man, the fulfillment, the superior one, the sympathetic high priest, Jesus. Thank you.